Hello YouTube, it's been a while, but I have another video for you guys. So I don't know if you remember, but I had a, another Tesla coil video and now I built this Tesla coil, a lot bigger, standing about four and a half feet tall. Here I am for comparison. And now I'm gonna show you guys the parts of the coil and later we'll fire it up. So here's the lower half of the Tesla coil. There in the back is the power supply. And in front of that, the long PVC tube is the uh, capacitor bank. And in the very front is the spark gap. And of course you can see the wiring as well. So for the power supply of this Tesla coil, I'm using the same neon sign transformer I used for the last one. This uh, transformer is uh, rated at nine kilovolts, 30 milliamps out at a uh, line frequency of 60 Hertz. So for the capacitor bank, I have five metal foil polypropylene, I think Cornell Dublier uh, capacitors at, I think each is rated 0 0.047 microfarads at 3000 volts DC. And I know I'm using an AC power supply, but because the uh, capacitors discharge before the voltage inverts, doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, an effective 3000 uh, volt rating per capacitor, five in series, so 15 kV total. And they're all in the uh, PVC tube, just wired in series. So for the spark gap, I have what's known as a uh, sucker spark gap, which basically uses a vacuum to remove ionized air from the spark gap area, which increases the voltage needed to bridge the gap and therefore increases the overall efficiency of the Tesla coil. Um, so for that, I just have uh, PC tubing with two uh, copper tubing fittings as the actual electrodes on the spark gap and a uh, vacuum to uh, remove the ionized air. So on the second layer of the Tesla coil, we have the primary coil which is made of copper refrigerator tubing. I think we have 11 winds, but we actually tapped it at the ninth wind because that gave us the resonance frequency in the primary to match the secondary. And um, yeah, it's uh, resting on polypropylene uh, cutting board. We just slice that into four pieces and use it as a stand. Here is a uh, top-down view of the primary coil. So it's not the prettiest thing in the world and it is a bit of a pain to wind, but it definitely works. So that's what matters. So this here is uh, everything that goes to ground. So we have the spark rail, which is also connected to the uh, ground wire that goes to the secondary coil. Both of those um, go to a nail that we place on the ground. And then finally we have um, a PVC pipe with a wire on it, which we use to interact with the coil, which also goes to ground. So for the secondary coil, which is about two feet long, we have around 1,100 wraps of gauge 25 copper enamel wire. So this took about two hours to wind using a drill, which we attached to a rod going through the uh, secondary PVC tubing and spinning that while um, winding the coil. Unlike most Tesla coils, I'm actually using a spherical top load. I'm using the same uh, sphere I made out of two 11-inch steel IKEA bowls from my Van de Graaff generator. And I've stuck a um, little nail on top of the uh, top load, which will act as a discharge point for the sparks that come off the coil. Okay, so now I'll be powering up the coil. Um, first, I'll have a zoomed out shot, and then I'll have a close-up shot of the thing in action. Off the light. Okay, it's recording. It let, is? Let me, yeah, let me... Hello, Internet. No, we're not. Just... My name is Dal. Or Gal. Right. My name is Dal. So that uh, loud sound in the background is the... Um, vacuum which we're using with our spark gap though honestly that isn't even too loud compared to the actual coil itself compared to my last coil which was albeit smaller but used the same power supply as this which gave around five inch sparks um, this one outputs around 16 inch streamers into the air and then about say 12 to 14 inch um, arcs the ground which is much better than before And here's the close-up shot of the coil. So with these sparks, which are around 12 to 16 inches, um, considering that it takes around three million volts to uh, generate a one meter long arc, these, which are about a third of a meter, take about a million volts. So we're outputting around a million volts. Here I've taken the last um, close-up shot, which I showed you guys and splice it together with a view of the Tesla coil but in the light so that you can actually see the top load and have that for comparison to the spark. So the top load is about a foot in diameter so you can just compare that 
to how long the sparks are. So that was the Tesla coil. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to a document containing all the calculations and formulas and whatnot that were used in the creation of the coil. And uh, i got to say thank you for watching.